Lord God, your son Jesus Christ reminded us that man cannot live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. We know that your son Jesus him, himself is the bread of life. As we sit down, O oh God, to break on this bread, may you open our ears, open our hearts, not only those who are here, but even those who are following us online. We pray, Father, that may you touch every office, every home, and even those that are traveling, O oh God, and have tuned in. We pray our Redeemer, that may you bless us together. Use me as a vessel, and God, as you speak to your church, also speak to me. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Give God a mighty hand clap. Just have your seats. I want you to smile to your neighbor. I know they may not, some may not be able to recognize your smile because of what you are putting on. But it's always good to smile to our neighbors. You can just wave them because they may not see your smile. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I want to share the word of the Lord this morning from the readings that were read to us. The first reading was taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 29, verse 1 to 11. And this is one of the common passages in the scriptures which we like reading, referring to, and at times quoting. I also touch on the second reading that came from the book of uh, John, chapter number one, downwards. John chapter number one, downwards. I want to speak about uh, addressing the real challenges of life. Addressing the real challenges of life or the reality of life. And either put addressing the reality of life or real challenges of life. If you have ever taken time to read through the uh, book of Jeremiah, you'll see number one, the need of having a true prophet of God. And number two, you'll see God's warning to the nation of Judah. And number three, you will see the wickedness of men. And number four, you will see the impact of false prophets. And then number five, you will also see restoration, uh, uh, God's promise and restoration of God. Going through this scripture, you realize that all was well in the city of Judah, and that God was taking good care of his people, but because of wickedness in the world, his people, the nation of Judah, had turned into idolatry. And so there was no true worship, worship of Yahweh. And actually, so many things were happening. But that, at that very moment, God saw the need of raising a prophet who will stand with a true message even at a time that people were sinking into uh, idolatry. I want to bless the Lord huh? that Jeremiah himself was born and raised in a house of a priest. But when God came to call him, God's calling upon him was not based on the calling of his father because God gave them a different ministry. And so Jeremiah was to stand and warn the nation of Israel from the many, many bad things that had made them to turn into idolatry. And he was also to address the counterfeit or the, uh, the, uh, the the counterfeit prophets who are also misleading God's people. 
from the passage that we have read, uh, this is a message of hope. A letter that was written by Jeremiah after these people had already, had already been taken into captivity. And actually, something was happening in that there were false prophets. At the same time, Jeremiah was there to speak the message of God. And actually, if you can just peruse through from verse, from chapter 27, you see what God had told Jeremiah. God had instructed Jeremiah to make a wooden yoke and put it on his shoulder. And he was to go around uh, uh, showing people what will happen. This is a man of God who never enjoyed a comfort kind of life that many of us as priests of today or prophets of today do enjoy. Praise the Lord. And actually his message was not well received. Imagine God telling him to do what? To put a yoke on himself. And this was to send a message to the nation of Judah that that is exactly what God was going to do. At the same time, there was a prophet by the name Hananiah. But he was a false prophet. And so immediately, Jeremiah did this and sent a message that very soon you will find yourself in captivity. That God is going to put a yoke on your shoulder in that things will not be easy. That was the message of God. But Hananiah came and also gave a prophecy that is in chapter 28 that in two years time God will restore everything that was taken into captivity and God will indeed all the articles of worship will be brought back into Jerusalem. And actually he went to where Jeremiah was. He took that yoke and broke it. And he said that just as I have broken this yoke from Jeremiah's shoulder, this is the same, same way God is going to break the yoke from your shoulders. Praise the Lord. And actually people believed Hananiah instead of Jeremiah. Praise the name of the living God. And Jeremiah said something in chapter 28 huh? from verse uh, 9. Verse 9 kindly projected for us. After Hananiah had said this and made a false prophecy and actually demonstrated it was a prophecy that was accompanied by demonstrations. This is what Jeremiah said. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as a truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. That is uh, Jeremiah 29 and verse 9. That any prophet who prophesies peace will only be known to have been sent by God. If his, promise, if his prophecy becomes true. And then Jeremiah left. But as he was leaving, God gave him a message. And told him to go back to the king. And he said uh, that you made uh, that God is going to make an iron yoke. Praise the name of the living God. Instead of the wooden one, God will make an iron yoke. In other words, God was telling them, you shall still be in captivity. Today, if someone may stand here and tell us that COVID will continue for 10 years, will we like him? Will we want to listen to his messages? If you are jobless and maybe I come to you and I tell you, you know what, brother so-and-so? God is telling me, will be jobless for the next five years. What you'll do, you'll just change the church. You'll move to another church. So Jeremiah was faced with so many challenges. 
But in chapter 19, in chapter 29, the Bible gives us the results of the realities of the challenges that the nation of Judah was going through. That this is a letter that was sent to the nation of Judah that had been taken to exile in Babylon. It is a letter. Praise the Lord. It was a message. It was a word from God to people who are in captivity. Right now as a nation, as a world, we are trying so much to ensure that COVID is dealt with. I want to thank God that the ministry, uh, the World Health Organ Organization is trying to work with other medics to ensure that we get, uh, we, we, we get that job in that all people can, be Im, uh, ca can get that uh, job that will boost our immune so that we can, our bodies can fight COVID. Today I've just received a message, praise the Lord, from the diocese that Adonai Insurance is offering a cover for COVID, 300,000 per family. Isn't that good news? It is good news because we have been told that insurances are not covering COVID per patients. But now there is a message of hope. So God also gave a message of hope. And actually that tells me that my bishop is praying for me. He's also concerned of my well-being. Of my well-being. And the well-being of his, of his uh, members across the diocese. One thing that stands out in chapter 29... Huh? From verse 4, the Bible says that this is what the Lord Almighty says. And then he goes ahead that build houses and settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce, marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters into marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Praise the Lord. This tells us that as a result of the challenges that the nation of Judah was facing, people have decided, had decided not to work. They had given up on working. You know, last Sunday I was here and I was sharing on what we can do to do what? To reciprocate God's love. And I mentioned something to do with Supporting the work of God. I mentioned something to do with paying of our taxes. Many of us have given up because you drive in our streets of Tena and you are like, do we have a governor in Nairobi? Praise the Lord. And at times you get frustrated because of our roads that have turned out to be something else. And at times we can give up. When things are not working, when finances are not coming your way, when you have stayed for so long without a job, when you have waited for so long to have a child, when you have waited for so long to get that promotion, at times you can give up. At times you can go to work to be seen, but not to work. Hallelujah. The nation of Judah had given up. And so God is challenging them that you need to work. You need to do what? You need to, uh, you, 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 you need to plant vineyards and harvests. And today I want to challenge us. The word of God is challenging us this morning. That you should not give up. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Don't give up. And actually, they have given up giving, having children, and giving their daughters and sons into marriage. 
because the situation was not good. They were dealing with real life challenges. And you know, these people had kind of developed uh, a nomadic kind of lifestyle whereby you care about nothing. You are always dreaming of a better church. Always dreaming of green pastures. You have a job, but you cannot appreciate God. You are always thinking of getting a better job. You moved from your rural place to Nairobi. You are in Nairobi now. You are dreaming of going to Dubai. It is good to be ambitious, but at times, being over ambitious can be dangerous. Praise the Lord. Because it can make you live have a nomadic kind of mentality. I don't know whether you have these people who are always moving from one church to another. They are looking for miracles. Mishai Waona, praise the Lord. They come to Tena two Sundays, the third Sunday. Wanasema mungu hayuko Tena. Wanajaribu hope. Wanaenda uko siku mbili, tatu. Tena mungu hayuko hope. Then wanatoka hapo. That is living a nomadic kind of life. We have people who cannot sustain unemployment because you are like a grasshopper. You want to move from one company to another. Today you are employed. Tomorrow you are complaining. The next day you are doing applications. May God help us. I'm here to tell us that in this life, we shall face challenges. And challenges are real, are real. And facing challenges does not mean that God has given up on you or has forgotten about you. He is still God. He is still caring. He is still concerned of your well-being. But the reason why these guys... The other thing that was happening is that these people had failed to plan. You know, living without a plan. We know how our Masa is moved from one place to another looking for pasture for their flock. Times they don't plan and they don't care. Hata kama ni kwa parliament, kama kuna nyasi, watafanya nini? Wataingiza ngombe zao. Nasa zile wanaenda huko Sisi wengine tuna grab mashamba ya? Mashamba yao na tunakatakata, tunanunua, tunakatakata, tunau? Tunauza. Hello? Because they don't have any plan. Right now we are planning, we are praying and hoping to see the year 2021. What are you planning? The other thing these people had stopped praying and the false prop prophets were gaining popularity. Praise the Lord. Taona mtu hawezi kutune on our online service kwa sababu kuna prophet manyuru mahali ukienda na kuambia kile unafanya nini? Kile iliuwa shosho yako. Na shosho yako alizikwa hata before uzaliwe kujua kile kilimuwa itakusaidia na nini you see people failing to come to church because they want to go to somewhere in Dandora uangaliwe kwa kio and they will come and tell you mko na shida eh ya ndoa mm wacha nitakupeleka mahali utaenda kuombe kuombewa na unaenda unaombewa Praise the name of the living God. They were gaining popularity. Actually, prophet Hananiah was the man of the day. And uh, on the other hand, Jeremiah was feeling rejection and torture. He was going through pain. I'm here to tell you, if you believe in God, it doesn't matter what you are going through. 
The end results will tell the difference. It doesn't matter what you are facing if you believe and trust in who? In God. The end results will tell the, di the difference. And actually when God, when Jeremiah came back with the message from the Lord, Hananiah was told that your days has come to an end. My brothers and sisters, we need to know that false prophets are harmful to our spiritual well-being. Why? And who is a false prophet, by the way? Who is a false prophet? Praise the Lord. Can you ask your neighbor who is a false prophet? Praise the Lord. Based on this text, a false prophet is anyone who misrepresents the word of God. That is number one. A false prophet is someone who misrepresents represents the word of God for personal gain. A false prophet is anyone who misrepresents the word of God for personal gain. Number two, a false prophet is anyone who discourages you from doing the will of God. Praise the Lord. That is a false prophet. I know many of us, we think false prophets are in somewhere in shrines, wakouko, with long turbans. Maybe the person sitting next to you could be a false prophet. Mwangalie vizuri. By the way, anda church, mune preachiwa na unatoka na mutu. Sasa leo pasi ya likuwa natubiria nini? Ni mambotu ya taitha natuambiaga. Kananga kitu ngina naeza preach. Nafikia umutu ana operate under which spirit? Based on this passage, yeah? such a person is a false. Such a person is a false. Because after Jeremiah had presented the word of God, Hananiah came. And actually he demonstrated why people should not believe Jeremiah. Hallelujah. You know one day I was an uh, uh, evangelism chair in our church and I had a friend of mine who was good in preaching and unfortunately he was from another church. And because my vicar by then knew him, when I went to him and when I went to her and told her, Venerable, I would like to invite Pastor So and so to come and share. So it was a revival that was going for three days. So I had preached the first day and the second day he came, he delivered a very good message. The following day, came and told the church that if you are paying tithes, and you still have problems in your marriages. And you are still jobless. And you have not been promoted for a whole year. The problem is not you. The problem is your pa. Praise the Lord. Wapendo anilisha oil kwa magoti. Kasema hii mchungaji akijua. Hii akifanya nini? That was the last time. I invited that guy in that church. And one day he calls me, he tells me, Ken, you are so hard working. Every time you are doing the work of God, you are in church in the evening, in the morning, cash us. God has shown me you are going to drive a new car filter, white. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. I am somewhere praying and God has shown me, God has shown me your picture. Driving a white filter. Hallelujah. Wakati wa filter ndi ulikuwa metokelezea. Then alipo maliza akaniambia, by the way, my car has a problem with the gearbox. So nataka tu elfu ngapi? Tano. Ukitoa hiyo tano, nae mungu anafanya nini? Anakupatia filter. Praise the Lord. Siku toa elfu tano. Kwa naesu wa sifiwe. Na to prove him wrong, siku pata filter. Mungu alinipatia nini? Spatial KAW. After some years. Color red, see white. Hallelujah. Because uyu mungu mwenye anataka kunipatia filter kwa kutoa shilingi elfu tano. Kwa nini ya simfixia gearbox? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uyo mungu wa mfixie nini kwanza? Gearbox. Ya shida elfu tano, ya nipatie gari ya 1.2 mi milioni. Najua sa zingine tama inafanya, we end up associating ourselves with wrong altars. Kwa sababu kutuna tama ya promotion. Kwa sababu kutuna tama ya Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Katua wapendu wa nilikuwa na kalia nduthi. Naenda hudu mwanani na preach na watu wa na okoka. Praise the Lord. So, false prophets. These people are not good. This is anyone who misrepresents the word of God. The truth is, whether you pay tithes or not, you will face tithe. Hallelujah. Because tithe is not a bribery. It is not a bribery. Yenye unapeana, diyo mtoto wako apite mtiani. It is not. It is an, a spiritual obligation. Yes. Sharing with the need is a spiritual oblige, obligation. Obligation. Hallelujah. So, me, I believe I'm blessed. Yes. Sasa hii kama gari zimefika KDA, na balo ni koko KW. Na inatembea. Hii gari jana ilienda chuka na ikarudi yao. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. False prophets. Their messages sound sweet in our ears but have no spiritual impact at all, at all. Their words are so sweet to hear. To hear. Nasikiaja ukikutana muta kwa me, by the way, when you last born, kweni? Na weni last born. So you feel good. Hello? Hello? By the way, mungu amenionyesha unapewa promotion. Promotion haikujangi hivi hivi. Praise the Lord. False prophet at times give short term or immediate hope. Because they are normally directed to people's emotions and feelings. This is where somebody wants to play around with your emo emotions. Hallelujah. The times even your psychology is put to test. And before you know it, you are in idolatry. Mm. 
And the victims end up uh, brainwashed, confused, and unable to think and act straight. Quite totally confused. Right now, we are in the season of Advent, whereby we are reminding ourselves about the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the nation of Judah was in captivity, God sent a, me a message. Hallelujah. It was his word that he said. He said, anytime my brother, my sister, you are faced with a problem or a challenge, what you need is the word of God. Wanaiswa sifiwe. Wengine, tunakimbia kukunywa jik, kipali ndiyo kuna upa. And these people will demonstrate and some will tell you that such things cannot happen in mainstream churches. They'll play around with your psychology to make you feel like mm -mm, even your bishop is not anointed enough to be your bishop. They will give you reasons at times. Why should you even go to SEK and then you find yourself with a nomadic kind of mentality jumping from one church to another. God sent his word. And John chapter 1 verse 14 says that the word of God became flesh. It became what? And it made its dwelling among among who? Amongst us. If you have the word of God you can overcome any challenge. If you have the word of God with you, you can overcome anything. Praise the Lord. Amen. Zina kwa chache, but ilianza kitambo, siku za hanania na Jeremiah. Church, let us face the realities of life. You are not just supposed to sit down and wait upon the Lord. It's good to pray and speak in tongues. But at times it's not good. Just pray without taking action. God challenged these people that you know what? You need to do something. Why? Because I have a good plan for you. Plan to give you hope and a better future. So before you quote Jeremiah 29 and please read from chapter 26 for you to know what God was addressing God was challenging the nation of Israel and God knew that they will be in captivity for 70 good years but the end results will be different. Hallelujah. I know in our midst we have people who have contracted covid some were in ICU, but they have come out more strongly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Some may be down. Some of us have been in quarantine centers. But your story is different. My brother, my sister, if you have the word of God with you, your story will be different. And so don't allow your neighbor or even your colleague to interpret your seasons for you. Asikuambia pana hii unatafuta usaidizi. Mungu wetu hafanyi kazi hivu. Praise the Lord. You know our church has a good name. S.E.K. St. Thomas Aquinas. The great thing. Thinker. Hallelujah. Someone says again. In the name of God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. 